President Obama nominates one of his biggest fundraisers as Commerce Secretary. Is this cronyism or is Penny Pritzker the right pick to build bridges with business? You're watching Inside Story Americas from Washington. Hello, I'm Kimberly Helkett. She has a net worth of $1.85 billion and is the 277th richest person in the United States. Just some of the reasons President Obama believes Penny Pritzker will have credibility when she deals with business leaders. But many progressives are uncomfortable with her appointment. Pritzker is a big figure in the Chicago business community and has raised millions of dollars for the president going back to his Senate campaign in 2004. She is a director of Hyatt Hotels, the chain founded by her father, which has been in a lengthy struggle with unions over working conditions. She was also on the board of Chicago's Superior Bank, which collapsed in 2001 after trading in subprime mortgages. And Republican senators have promised to ask some very difficult questions about Pritzker's alleged use of offshore tax havens at her nomination hearing. But President Obama appeared to be unconcerned about her track record when he announced her nomination last week. Penny is one of our country's most distinguished business leaders. She's got more than 25 years of management experience in industries including real estate, finance, and hospitality. She's built companies from the ground up. She knows from experience that no government program alone can take the place of a great entrepreneur. She knows that what we can do is to give every business and every worker the best possible chance to succeed by making America a magnet for good jobs. I'm joined now from Los Angeles by Kathy Youngblood. She's a Hyatt housekeeper and spokeswoman for the Someone Like Me campaign, advocating for better working conditions for Hyatt workers. She'd like to serve on Hyatt's board when Penny Pritzker steps down. Ms. Youngblood, talk to me a little bit about what it is like to work for Penny Pritzker. Well, uh, please understand, and thank you, Kimberly, for uh, having me on today. Uh, I want the listening public to understand that uh, I have never really met Mrs. Pritzker or any of the members of the board of directors. I'm hoping to do so. Uh, I am a Hyde housekeeper, and I'm employed at the Hyde Ondas in West Hollywood, California. I've been there almost three years now. And if you ask me what it's like to work uh, for Mrs. Pritzker, well, let me tell you what it's like to work for Hyatt. First of all, I enjoy working for Hyatt, but uh, when I was in, uh, first employed, uh, there were many problems that I noticed, and I know that Hyatt can do a better job. It can be a better company if they would listen to someone like me. Now, this Someone Like Me campaign is where we are calling on Hyatt, my coworkers and I, to add a 13th seat to the board of directors. And as you know already, uh, Mrs. Pritzker has been, uh, her name has been placed in nomination to serve under President Obama as Secretary of Commerce. But long before uh, this present uh, um, nomination, uh, we had called on Hyatt to add that 13th member. There are a well, lot of let problems Let me jump in here for a second, Hyatt. because I want to try yeah. and understand why it is that you think it's so important to have an employee on that board. What is it about working conditions right now? I mean, is it just you that has an issue with working conditions, or are there other employees that feel the same way? Oh, no, it's not just me. It's, it's a lot of Hyatt employees, and I've been crisscrossing the country talking to Hyatt employees uh, in the different uh, respective hotels around the country. We have things like we need proper tools and equipment, uh, such as fitted sheets, lighter vacuum cleaners, adjustable tools. Um, we do need for management to listen when we suggest a better way of doing things. We are the ones that work in the hotel. We are the front line. We are the first responders. And I don't think any member of the board has worked in a hotel. So if they would just sit down and listen to someone like me, I think they could learn a lot. Of course, I could learn a lot from them, but also, if you were a business person, wouldn't you want to know what's going on in the hotel? Wouldn't are these you want just to know sort of employee grievances, better? though, or are there actual legitimate safety concerns at play? Oh, yes, there are many safety concerns. Now, the life, the, the job of a housekeeper is very fast-paced. And being fast-paced, uh, you open yourself up to numerous bruises daily. 
because of the fast-paced work um, and the proper tools that we still need, uh, we do things that daily, perhaps people who don't work in a hotel, it, this is not like cleaning a bedroom in your house. It's not like cleaning a house. You have a number of rooms you're assigned each day. You have to turn over those rooms fast, especially if it's 100% occupancy at the hotels. So it is a very hard job, and it's very hard to explain to the public out there who have never done hotel housekeeping. So do you but think it that is that one of the hardest Hyatt jobs I've had in my life. Do you think that Hyatt Management and Ms. Pritzker's family is taking the concern seriously? Well, so far they haven't contacted me, and I would love a chance to sit down and talk with the members of the board of directors, especially Mrs. Pritzker, and if she does step down uh, at the Hyatt Corporation, I believe this would be the first ever vacancy on the Hyatt board, so why not insert someone like me who works in the hotel, who knows how to correct the problems, who, who has the confidence of all the hotel workers, I could share with them, we could discuss things, and I think it would be a better company, but Hyatt really needs to go in a, a different direction right now, right now. Well, for more on the story, I'm joined from Chicago by Rick Perlstein. He's a journalist and historian and the author of Nixon Land. In our studio, we've got not just one, but two White House correspondents, Reed Epstein from Politico and Hans Nichols from Bloomberg. Uh, Rick Perlstein, I want to start with you. You know, we just heard from the employee Kathy Youngblood of the Hyatt Hotel chain mm -hmm. with some pretty serious allegations for someone who is nominated to be a member of the president's cabinet. Yeah, I mean, I think there are two ways of making money in a capitalist economy. There's kind of a low road strategy in which you kind of buy and sell properties without much concern for the various stakeholders, including the communities and labor. And there's a high road strategy, and plenty of people have made a lot of money that way. I mean, for example, there's a company in America called Costco. Uh, the CEO is Craig Jelinek, and he's really made it a, a priority of his company to make sure he maintains his employ employees as long as possible by paying them, if anything, above the prevailing wage. The Pritzkers have always done things differently in a very non-public spirited way. I mean, just to give an example, when the patriarch of the family, uh, A.N. Pritzker, died in 1986, he was a billionaire. He, he you know, bequeathed $1.4 billion to each of 11 cousins, but he claimed to only have $3,000 in taxable income. Uh, it, that's not a very welcoming or uh, comforting pattern for someone who's going to be a public servant. So do you think that these concerns are something that will be a problem for Penny Pritzker? Or is this just the way businesses operate in the United States? And if you're being nominated for Com Commerce Secretary, well, this is just the, the way things are going to go. No, it's not the way all businesses operate in the United States. I mean, uh, in 1982, the Kansas City Star did a three-part investigation uh, of the Pritzker family and discovered that the Hyatt had been paying no taxes. And their response was not to apologize, but to try and buy the paper. And then when that failed, uh, they, uh, there was, Hyatt was the only part of their holdings out of the 260 companies, most of them kind of held secretly, that was uh, publicly held. So they went private, so they didn't have to file anything with the SEC and could avoid accountability. I mean, there's lots of ways to run companies in America, and they're all legitimate, assuming you operate within the law. But if you're going to be a public servant, your job is to serve all the stakeholders in society. And that's what's concerning about Penny Pritzker, and that's what's going to make her confirmation hearings uh, very difficult for Obama. I think he'll lose a lot of credibility with the public when Republicans start asking about how efficiently that family, and Penny Pritzker in particular, has hit assets from the Internal Revenue Service. Hans Nichols, want to get you to weigh in here because these are that's pretty serious blemish to have on a resume. Sure, Ella, but let's look at how Penny kind of came to her position. The White House throughout the first term had a lot of criticism of not having anyone from the business community. And then when he was going through the transition process, filling out all these cabinet positions for a second term, the big criticism was not enough women. So with Pritzker, they checked the business box and they checked the women's box. Now in terms of, of her confirmation battles, yes, it will be challenging, but remember, she's not in front of the Senate Finance Committee. That's a much rougher committee to go before. She'll get she'll she'll be in a different committee in the Senate, and they don't have a history of really roughing up nominees the way that Senate Finance does, which is where Jack Lew went, where things got really ugly. Oh, Read though, uh, Reed Epstein. I mean, she's being nominated though for a, a Commerce Secretary position. Is this the best candidate if you're looking for someone who sort of will reflect the needs of the business community? 
Well, I mean, she is someone who knows the business community. She's uh, been a pillar of, of the business community in Chicago. But the other thing to remember is that Republicans uh, aren't about to beat her up for union practices of the Hyatt hotel chain. Uh, you know, the Republicans in the Senate generally uh, have taken a fairly anti-union stance in the past. If anyone is going to beat her up on that, it would be liberal Democrats who aren't inclined to uh, attack one of President Obama's nominees. Well, let's take a look at the statement from the Hyatt Hotel chain, because they did release a statement about this nomination, and they say, quote, if circumstances lead to Penny Prisker resigning from the Hyatt Board of Directors, the board of members, or rather the board members, will take appropriate action at that time. Penny Prisker has a long and distinguished career in business and public service, and Hyatt has benefited from her insights and contributions as a board member. So, uh, Rick Perlstein, maybe I want to ask you then, is this mm -hmm. what President Obama Obama is looking at sort of her her record of service not you know in the business community and sort of these issues that are arising from management at the Hyatt hotel chain well hopefully nobody's gonna really make a big deal out of that well I mean he's trying to look beyond that I mean the fact of the matter is she was um, his finance chair in 2008 she brought in big players like Warren Buffett and uh, all the while, the reason she wasn't able to be uh, Commerce Secretary in 2008 when her name was floated was because it literally took years and years uh, to kind of disentangle herself from all the financial owning, uh, holdings that her family has. Uh, the New York Times once reported that uh, the Pritzker family owns so many companies that none of the members of the family can even remember what companies they own. Uh, Hyatt is just one of them. And the Republicans probably won't go after the labor practices, although I wouldn't put it past them. They can be very cynical. They may go after, for example, her uh, use of public subsidies to buttress her businesses. I mean, when her bank, Superior, collapsed in 2001, they uh, were able to buy the bank and uh, avail themselves of $650,000 in tax subsidies because uh, the bank was indebted. Uh, in the neighborhood where I live, Hyde Park, uh, which is anything but a blighted neighborhood, she took advantage of a $5. million grant from taxpayer increment financing, which is uh, kind of a mayor-controlled slush fund that's supposed to be used for blighted communities. Uh, and she built a hotel that actually is uh, going to only have like 20 employees. It's going to be a speed-up operation. It's uh, going to be very ugly business. And while she was taking that $5.2 million, she was serving on Chicago's appointed school board, which uh, claims uh, that the system has a $500 million deficit. Now, I didn't hear her say, well, the TIF fund, which is, again, that mayoral controlled fund for developers, has a $250,000 surplus. Let's, supply, let's apply some of that to the schools. So again, when I, what we're seeing is uh, maybe a canny businessman. Uh, person, maybe someone who's uh, very successful at scooping up companies, but not someone who's shown any inclination towards public service that kind of serves all the constituencies that a public servant has to pay attention to. I, I want to pick up on one thing that Rick Perlstein said there. You know, he mentioned that President Obama, <laughs> of course, tried to, to, to nominate Penny Pritzker in 2008. So they do have a very long standing sure. relationship. I want to talk about that a little bit because she is a personal friend of Barack Obama, a longtime donor and fundraiser for his campaigns. She was the national finance chair of Obama's 2008 campaign and national co-chair of his re-election effort. She heads the investment firm PSP Capital Partners and an associated property firm, Pritzker Realty Group. Pritzker is from the family that owns the Hyatt Hotels. Of course, we've been discussing that. She is a member of the board there, but she doesn't have an executive role. And unions representing the hotel workers say Hyatt is among the worst employer and are opposing her nomination. Now, during the 1990s, she chaired Superior Bank, which focused on subprime lending to customers with poor finances. It later collapsed amid accounting irregularities and loans going bad. The Pritzker family has used offshore trusts and foreign bank secrecy laws to shelter their wealth from income taxes, uh, capital gains taxes, and also inheritance taxes. And Penny Prisker says most of her wealth is held by domestic trusts and that the offshore trusts were established when she was a child and before U.S. laws were changed. So when all of these things are coming up, Reed Epstein, you know, 2008, obviously this was an issue for the White House. They couldn't put this nomination through. The resume really hasn't changed. So why why now is President Obama feeling comfortable about this? Well, we've seen a, a difference in how President Obama has approached his second term cabinet from the first. Uh, if you look at who he's nominated uh, from Chuck Hagel for de at Defense Secretary on down, it's been people who he is comfortable with 
uh, with less regard to the politics than he did during this first term. These are people who are inner circle uh, or second circle President Obama people. Penny Pritzker has been a friend of uh, president and the, the president and the first lady for years dating back to when he was in the Illinois State Senate. Uh, and she is someone who he is uh, is instinctively comfortable with and that was why she got the nomination now when in 2008 uh, before the first term political considerations might have stopped him. So uh, President Obama now that it's second term really doesn't care about any of the pushback? Is, is that what's going on here? Well I think there's a recognition he'd get pushback from whomever he appointed especially from the business community. Uh, they reached out to other people in the business world but other people didn't want to go through this bruising punishing vetting uh, confirmation process which you know as, as uh, others are raising it, it could be useful to sort of look at all this but it's very hard to get people with long business backgrounds to submit to that sort of rigorous like sort of fine tooth going over all, all the records. So there, there's a little bit of that. Look, we can all talk about how co important commerce is going to be. I mean, let's not forget that the president talked about eliminating commerce, reorganizing in a serious way. The cabinet has been traditionally a very weak cabinet. It's not like the president relies on the cabinet to do a lot of important things. So we'll get all very excited and we'll talk about Pritzker now. But I suspect most of us won't be writing a lot of Pritzker. Reed, Reed may be writing about Pritzker <laughs> every week. But we're really not going to be writing about Pritzker all the time as though it matters. You remember, NOAA is housed in commerce, right? National Ocean. Uh, atmospheres. I mean, there's a lot of things that commerce does that isn't necessarily trade focused. Now, so this is the, just and political the other, patronage. Well, the other thing to remember, like Han said, commerce is uh, almost a third tier cabinet post. It's not as if she's being appointed to be Treasury mm -hmm. Secretary, where she would have a, a real influence on the U.S. economy and how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, it, commerce Secretary is, is more of a cheerleader, and it's been traditionally a place where U.S. presidents have have rewarded their major fundraisers with a cabinet appointment. Well, you brought up these confirmation hearings. Sure. Uh, you know, Senator Charles Grassley has already said he's, he's issued a press release mm -hmm. saying, look, I'm going to go after these, yeah. these alleged offshore tax uh, sites and, and really push on that. I mean, how much of a problem is this going to be? Do you think this could hold up the nomination? It will, it will be slight, but like Gra Grassley's, you know, the ranking member on finance, right? And this, the commerce goes to what community? It goes to banking, right? It goes to banking. So, so Grassley, he, he may have some sway there, but Grassley's hinting that he's going to make an issue about this when it goes to the floor. Once c uh, candidates, nominees get reported out of committee, they usually sail through and then they get through. I mean, the really tough punches that we've seen, at least it, it, with the Obama team, has been in the committee. Once you're out of committee, you're kind of in the clear. Well, uh, Rick Prolson, I want to bring you back in here. I mean, there's mm -hmm. been a lot of criticism about, you know, from business leaders who really were not happy with President Obama in the first term, said, you know, they really, the Obama administration mm -hmm. vilified Wall Wall Street in its first term. Is this the kind of appointment that's going to mend that relationship? Or sorry, not appointment, nomination. No, that's yeah, that's not that's not really how things work. I mean, a lot of that criticism was quite bad faith and petulant. I mean, this is a guy I think really who's bent over biz, uh, backwards to be fair to business, which just goes to show you that uh, we're almost talking about a, a, a tribal situation more than one that's kind of based on rational kind of illumination of someone's record. They're going to look at Barack Obama uh, and say, well, if he's appointing someone from business, that's just, you know, sort of uh, a shield or a cover up of his real anti-business agenda. I mean, these are folks who are used to getting their way. And uh, in fact, <laughs> there was a funny story about um, Penny Pritzker a couple of years ago in uh, the New York Times that she was frustrated that Obama wasn't being nice enough to her and hadn't invited him, her on his uh, executive jet. So that's the kind of petulance we're talking about, even from Penny Pritzker. Yeah, but, but so I'm in, not really def, sure we're going to... Uh, in defense, in defense, it's a very nice executive jet. I mean, Air Force <laughs> One is just not your standard executive jet. It's a nice one, but... I, I have to admit, you know... The, the I've never were, been on one, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know either, but, uh, you know, it does appear for people who may not understand the inner workings, and I could be one of them, uh, that there does seem to be sort of conflict of interest here. I mean, you say this is, is a, mm -hmm. po a, a posting <laughs> where, you know, it's really just a cheerleading role, it's a theory third tier type position but at the same time you're overseeing yeah. policy which could directly benefit your family's company as uh, companies isn't yeah, it? I mean look, look at something like uh, yeah her, her executive role in a company like TransUnion which is you know one of the three companies that's involved in a very bottom, bottom feeding business of credit reporting you know all kinds of stuff of you know people not being able to kind of correct their credit records when there's been mistakes that have been made and she was very 
very callous when it came to that. I mean, she's like, people should check their credit reports, right? I mean, she's not, uh, it's not like Superior Bank where she was kind of a third tier, third tier person on the board. She's had a big role in TransUnion and was even, uh, it was even talked about that she was kind of working on bringing that company public. So if she's going to go before the banking uh, committee, the banking committee should be asking her questions about that. So just as, as, as Penny Pritzker will sign a lot of waivers, so she won't have the uh, ability to, to sort of weigh in on TransUnion. There are waivers on that. I have a similar waiver with TransUnion just because my credit score for them was so low. I probably shouldn't be talking about them <laughs> on, on television. Uh, Reed, I guess, though, I'm wondering, you know, when you're you're looking at, at a position and you've got this sort of, I mean, appearances matter. I mean, it's politics. Appear, that's, that's what politics is, appearances. Uh, isn't this a concern when you're the Obama administration, you portray yourself as, as, you know, being on the side of Main Street, and then you've got the side of Wall Street, and it seems very tilted with this nomination? Or am I reading this wrong? Well, there's, I mean, a lot of instances where President Obama sort of says one thing and does another. Uh, you know, if you look at just Guantanamo uh, Bay, when he had his press conference last week and he said he's wanted to close it when all of his actions that he's taken uh, have been the opposite of that. And, and so it's part of it is, you know, it's a, like Han said, it's a wink to the business community to get someone who is of their own uh, involved in, in running the Commerce Department, thinking that that will at least, uh, you know, help them. It's a voice. It's an open ear. That's yeah, what they give, want. They want someone that understands. Is gives, there going to be genuine revamping, though? That's what the president said would happen. Is this well, the person who can do th that? So when Bill Daley was brought in as chief of staff, who was Commerce Secretary under Clinton, did have some banking experience, he quickly realized that when he was listening to the business community, he couldn't take their complaints to the White House and be taken seriously. So yes, she may have, uh, the outreach to the business community may work with putting Pritzker in at Commerce, but it'll be short-lived because in some ways they're coming at this at different angles. And some of the things Rick was talking about, just sort of the complaints complaints from the business community called them petulant. I don't know if I'd go that far, but they certainly work the refs, right? I mean, what did Obama do that was so terribly mm -hmm. uh, disastrous for the business community? He called them fat cats. I mean, that's rhetorical. You know, now on, on the policy side of things, was the president really that anti-business? I think when you talk to liberal Democrats on that, they don't, they don't necessarily agree. So, so who is the president trying to please with this nomination, uh, Reed Epstein? Well, he's certainly trying to, you know, he, this is someone who is friends with his family, friends with Valerie Jarrett, one of his chief advisors, uh, who had been pushing for her. Uh, and so it's, you know, and he's trying to please himself. You know, he's, he's nominating someone who he knows, who he's friends with. This isn't someone, this isn't the case of senators coming to him saying, we think you should nominate Penny Pritzker. This is someone who the president has clearly had in mind for a cabinet post going back to the, before his first term began. So, Rick Perlstein, I mean, how does this overall mm -hmm. make the president look with this nomination? Or does it make him look bad? Does he even care if it does? You know, I think it does make him look bad. There's a big a, a debate ever since, you know, he became a public figure. Who is this guy? Who is Barack Obama? What does he believe in? And a lot of his progressive supporters have said, well, he really is a liberal, but he's got to kind of trim his sails because he's got to get reelected. Well, now he's been reelected. And what my colleagues on the panel have said is, well, now he's really showing his true colors. He's showing who he's comfortable with. So there's two things that that affects. One is his legacy. Is he going to want to be seen as a guy who, you know, in, a, in, in, in the biggest economic crisis and the biggest crisis for the middle class was someone who sided with the fat cats? And then there's the more near-term consideration where he has these very tough legislative fights on immigration reform if he wants to get a cap and trade bill through. And he's going to need the support of the progressive infrastructure. And how are these people going to be willing to go to bat for them if they feel like he's thumbing their nose in their faces? I mean, it's hard to imagine like too many people on the left getting worked up about Penny Pritzker. Uh, you know, I think if you walk down the street, uh, come see, to Chicago, my friend. Is that really true, though? Because I mean, there's I think, been an awful lot of criticism. But if you walk down the street it, in. There have been uh, concerns about, you know, working practices and unions have concerns. I mean. But, but they cleaned up a lot of the problems with the unions. I mean, when we first reported that she was in the kind of the leading candidate, it was early February, and now we are here in, in early May, that's three months where they had to clean up and make sure that everyone on the union side, and they didn't get everyone, but they did a lot of legwork, a lot of spade work, making sure that the unions wouldn't really go apoplectic when this, is, this was announced. That's why this, we're in May, and well, we're finally getting the Well, that's political capital they had to spend. I mean, that's political capital they had to spend that they might not have in their uh, quiver when they go to the, back to the unions for another fight, say, in immigration. It sounds a little messy in advance of these nomination hearings. But these are, I mean, this is what he, the President Obama is willing to go through to get people who he knows and he is comfortable in his cabinet.
We'll see if he succeeds. Gentlemen, thank you. And that is all from the team in Washington, D.C. for now. Thanks for watching Inside Story Americas.